Welcome to my shop. I've used this Bosch track saw for two and a half years and I've come up with a couple of solutions to make it a replacement for a miter saw and also partly for a table saw and I'll show you these solutions and I'm also going to tell you what I like about the saw and what I don't like. This track saw was the first circular saw I owned and for one and a half years it was the only one so it was the only saw I could use for straight clean cuts and so it had to be my miter saw replacement and my table saw replacement and I've come up with a jig to make this easier and to um, make repeatable cuts possible and I've also come up with a couple of ideas and solutions to make life easier for me without a table saw and that's what I'm going to show you now. So to make this saw a good replacement for a miter saw and to make repeatable cuts I basically turned my whole workbench into a jig for that. So this has a couple of components. One of them is this fence which has a rail on top of it with a measuring tape and with the ability to adjust the stop block here that can be used for repeatable cuts and you can swipe it up and down so that you can leave it in place and still cut a longer piece and then you swipe it down and you can use it as a stop block again. The second component is uh, are two pieces. One is here attached to the sh uh, to the bench, and another one can be inserted here into the bench like this. And then you can use the track here. This is the Festool track. That's important. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. And now you have a straight a, a right angle with this fence. And now when you use the track saw to cut along here and you put the piece of the work piece against the fence you have a straight cut and a right angle that works like that i'm just going to show you you put this in here and then you can use the track saw put it on the track and then you can do your rectangular cut and if you have a longer piece you just put this up then it can go here and for the second cut for example to get the repeatable length then you go against the stop block and you can make the next cut. One of the challenges was to get this into a proper right angle to the fence and I solved this by making this piece of the stop block or whatever you might call that adjustable so these are screws um, or bolts that go all the way through and this piece has long holes so I could actually uh, tighten the screws and try the angle and if it was not a proper right angle I could loosen them adjust this a little and then tighten them again until it was a real right angle and whenever uh, I realize that the, the angle might be a little off I can once again loosen the screws and adjust it and tighten them again and I put counter bolts uh, counter nuts on top of that so that it hopefully doesn't move. Obviously this is not as useful as a rear miter saw but it does a very good job and in most of the cases it works well. There are a couple of shortcomings to this approach. One is obviously that you have <clears throat> quite a long distance here between the cut and where the fence ends. And the fence has to end here because you need somewhere for the body of the saw to go. So you cannot make really short pieces. You are restricted to about 50 centimeters in length. If you want to go shorter than that, it doesn't really work because the workpiece only has a very short distance on the fence where it can um, adjust to the right angle. Another point is that I had to get this Festool track instead of the Bosch track, which I'm going to show you later. Um, because the Bosch track is narrow, narrower than the Festool track. And on the Bosch track, the body of the saw, let me show you, the body of the saw um, sticks out to the left. So it's not possible to put the track against this line and move the saw because then the body would touch um, would touch the stop block here and with the festool track that's different if you look at that um, 
the base of the saw is narrower than the track so you have a straight line that you can put against these two stop blocks and then you can move the saw but I still had to cut the fence short so that the body of the saw doesn't interfere with the fence. So these are the shortcomings but as you can see in a couple of examples in uh, different projects I'm going to show you now um, one um, example from my last project the lumber cart it does work fairly well for repeatable cuts and I'm really pleased with how much I can, uh, I can accomplish with this um, and I don't really have the place in the workshop to put up a real miter saw station so this has been a good replacement for me. Now you've already guessed that the Bosch saw works uh, both on the Bosch tracks which are really the muffle track system just adapted for Bosch and it also works on the Festool tracks but you have to adjust um, the width of this groove here at the bottom. It has two grooves. One of them is a narrower one for the Bosch track and one of them is a wider one for the Festool track. So here you can see the two track systems, the Bosch and the Festool one. And on the Bosch system you put the saw base onto the track and it runs on this little ridge here which is very narrow. And if you want to put it on the Festool one, it goes into this wider uh, ridge and then it has a lot of play. And to adjust this play, there are these two dials here and they are very hard to turn. Let me show you. Um, so they are, they are here and here and they are very hard to turn um, in the setting as it was out of the box. So I just drilled holes into these dials and put small pieces of polished wire through it, 3 mm in diameter, so that I have a longer piece to put my finger on. And I made two markings here, one with a B for Bosch and with an F for Festool. And then I can easily turn the dial to the position that I've tested to be um, just enough play for the saw to slide smoothly and at the same time not have too much play so that the cut is actually straight and doesn't wobble. There's another adjustment that you have to make if you want to run the Bosch saw on the Festool track system. And it's about these green stripes here which are a very smooth plastic to make the saw run smoothly on the track. And Originally they are set in this groove and in this groove and if you leave them there the saw base will not sit at a right angle to the base of the track and the saw cut will then not be at a right angle. So I used a hairdryer to make them a little warm and then the, the glue that is used to attach them is easily um, can easily come off and then you have to carefully take them out and put them on these two surfaces so that they are actually at the same height and then the Bosch saw runs at a right angle on the track and then you can use that Vestool track with the Bosch saw. Another approach that I take when I use the saw is that I use the workbench as my top for sawing and that's because it's the only straight surface that I have. I don't have an assembly table or anything so I really have to use that and I don't really like to work on the floor because I don't have that much room there either. So I use these bench cookies to raise the workpiece up and I'm just going to show you that for a moment. And just put them here and then put the workpiece on top. And then I can use the track and do the sawing and the holes in the workbench are also good because I can use this hold fast for example to secure this piece and then it really doesn't move and if it still does move I can use a second one. And now it's really attached and I can put the track on here. I often don't use the clamps that come with the tracks because the track really does stick fairly well to the surface but if I do have to use the clamps I can also take this approach. So I just put this more to the front and then I really have to let it stick out. This is not ideal sometimes but it usually works. But then you really do need the hold fast um, to, 
You do need to hold fast because otherwise, of course, the, the workpiece would tilt over. And then I can put this here. And there are these um, clamps that come with the track. And then you just put them in here. And as usual, you can then adjust, uh, attach the track to the workpiece so that it really doesn't move. Now let's look at the saw in more detail. It's very good build quality, it's sturdy and it's comfortable to grab. You can grab it with one hand and push it or you can grab it with two. The whole body is based on the muffled track and plunge saw, but it's not exactly the same type of saw, but that's the basic design. I think that Bosch cooperated with muffle, but I'm not quite sure about that. It's a plunge saw obviously, so you can um, push this button and then plunge the saw blade into the workpiece. And there's a very easy mechanism here to adjust the depth to which you plunge. You just push a button here and then you have a millimeter scale and you can adjust that depth very easily and then it locks into place. And here's a very simple mechanism to adjust that depth for use with the track or without the track because obviously if you don't use the track the saw will be lower down and you just turn this around and then you get the correct depth for that as well. If you want to change the blade, it's very easy too. Um, you lift that handle up and then you push the button and plunge and then it will lock into this position. The body here is flat so that you can put it on this side and it will rest like this. And here in the handle is the Allen wrench that you need for um, opening the screw here. And then you can use that to open the screw. And here's a button to lock the saw blade so that you can unlock that screw. And then you take this out, take out the saw blade in this direction and put in a new one. So you can do it with this one Allen wrench you don't need any extra tools and that wrench um, stores very securely in the handle so that you always have it with you. You can also adjust the angle at which you saw. For that you unlock this screw and the other one at the back here. And then there's a scale here from minus 1 to 47 degrees and it goes from 0 to 45 and if you want to go to minus 1 or um, 7 to 47 you push that button and then it goes that extra 2 degrees or that extra 1 degree in the other direction. And then you just tighten those screws again and that locks the saw at this angle. One thing I like about the Boss Track system is that it has a very good mechanism um, to be joined together um, when you want to use more than one track. Um, although I have to say it's probably the muffled track system that Bosch adopted. And I have an 80 centimeter and 160 centimeter track, and that seems to be a good length because this is very good for cross cuts here. And if I need longer cuts, I usually have enough length with this one but for the occasional very long cut I can join them together for that you remove those plastic caps from the end and there's then this connector which stores in the track itself so you don't have to keep it separately somewhere um, it's out of the way when you don't need it and you just put these tracks together and you push that connector to half width adjust those four screws and then the two tracks are very securely connected to each other and if you want to loosen it again just those four screws and as I said this just stores on the track itself it's not in the way when you push the saw along it so uh, you have one worry uh, one fewer worry where you keep the connector while you don't use it. There's also one aspect of that track system that I don't like that much and that, it's, that is that it's so um, narrow. I already mentioned earlier that the saw, if you put it on the track, um, the saw base is wider than the track itself. So you can see it here, the saw base sticks out of the track on the left. 
In normal use cases that is not much of a problem, but if you want to use the saw like I do here when putting the, the track on the left flush with some stop block or something, that doesn't work. And that's better I think on the festival system because there the saw base is smaller or narrower than the track and the Festool tracks have this extra groove here which you can use to attach different devices like jigs or something for example a jig to cut to the same width every time you can attach them and you can leave them on while you saw in this case you can attach something to this ridge but then you have to take it off while you push the saw along so I think the Festool system has an advantage in this case on the other hand, the connector goes just into this um, narrow groove here. I think this is better solved with the Bosch and muffle track systems. This video was inspired by the question of one of my subscribers, Richard Wright, who wanted to know if my setup with the track saw and the fence here could replace a table saw in a small shop. And I'd say in very many cases it can replace a table saw for one and a half years it replaced a table saw for me because I didn't have one but um, it's a bit more work to set it up so a table saw is, cer is certainly a lot more convenient because you can just switch it on adjust the fence and then you can go here you always have to adjust things and put a jig on the top of the workbench and it takes more time to do that and it's very hard to cut small pieces with this setup so as long as you have a piece that's at least 50 centimeters long and has a good length here on the fence um, that's okay if it's not too wide because you're limited in width as well if you remember I have this jig here um, and the width of the workpiece is limited to about 60 centimeters in my case because that's what fits in here and then I, I'm limited with the body of the saw because I cannot go further back than this so if you have something wider to cut you cannot do it on the workbench you have to use the, the, the track or use it uh, right a square or something to get a square angle that makes it more well cumbersome or it takes a lot more work to to do so to answer your question which Richard I think if you really don't have the the room for a table saw this can work if you have some small adjustments and uh, things to add perhaps you have very good hand sawing skills or you have a good jigsaw or something to make those smaller cuts um, otherwise I was very pleased when I could add my table saw into the setting because that has made cutting a lot more easy and I really, I'm really pleased that I have both saws at my disposal now. Still overall I'm very pleased with this saw. Um, I didn't regret buying it at all. I, before I got it I was considering the Festool track saw which is a couple of hundred euros more um, expensive than this one and um, the muffle of course which is a lot more expensive so that was out of the question for me but I didn't regret getting the Bosch. If you need to use the saw very close to a wall for example if you lay floors and you want to cut the floors along the wall the Festool one is better because the Festool one can cut a lot closer to a wall because it's flatter here. This one has the dust collection outlet which keeps it away from a wall a, a couple of centimeters more but that's not a use case I really need so I haven't regretted it and saved about 200 euros in comparison to the Festool track saw and it seems to me that it's a very good saw, very sturdy, very good build quality and it has everything I need. I'd get it once again if I was in, would be in the position, position to, to buy one again. I hope you found this review useful and I'd really like to know in the comments what your track saw tips are, if you have any suggestions for improvement for my setting or if you had any good ideas on how you use your track saw, I'd be really pleased to learn about that. So I hope to see you back soon and remember watch, learn and then make something.